Hi, I'm Catherine Gray, also known as this cat on Twitter, and I sporadically blog at Dirt to Dish about local food. And tonight I'm going to be talking to you about eating with the seasons, the Garanimals method. You may remember Garanimals from our childhood. It was this line of children's clothing where it had hang tags with an animal on it. And you match the tops with another hang tag that had the same animal on it. Because it's really cute outfit. And you look like this very smart young man right here. And so he, was, so he still has them. Um, but before I go any further, I just want to say that um, I am going to be talking about meat. And there will be some depictions of very cute animals. And of course, anyone is free to make any of their own substitutions in the recipes. And I am really, really sorry, Don. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, like your animals, nature offers us um, a variety of foods in the seasons of all different colors, and when we eat them seasonally, they're at the peak of their ripeness, and so they taste delicious, and they're also a lot more healthful. Um, and then um, there are the neutrals, and in my days of retail clothing, we called them the khakis and the denims. Um, but these are the foods that take on other flavors and also <laughs> add some heftiness to um, dishes as well as um, texture with grains and legumes. Um, and then, um, to totally stretch the <laughs> metaphor a little too far, just accessories and granules didn't really have accessories as far as I know, but um, <laughs> herbs and spices and honeys and vinegars are the things that add character to a dish. Um, and <laughs> you remember this woman? Um, this is Dr. Joyce Brothers, and she uh, believed that the granules method actually gave children a real sense of <laughs> pride and accomplishment and an overall sense of, of well-being. And everyone wants that. And when we eat a variety of foods, um, we get that as well. And each food group, each color actually is associated with different health benefits, which is why we're encouraged to have a lot of different foods. And fortunately, matching is not so important with foods. Touching is sometimes an issue, but not so much matching. <laughs> In spring, um, this is cold season. And fortunately, those plants that are starting to pop up out of the ground, like radishes and watercress, um, when you put them together, they have a lot of vitamin C in them. Who knew? Um, and potatoes um, actually have a lot of lysine, and that is a chemical that can help heal from chicken pox. And garlic is an overall um, immune booster, and you know, and the bacon just tastes good. <laughs> and rosemary and lamb um, always go really well together and really plentiful. Oh. <laughs> vitamin B in it, which is it's really rubbed up and um, it's great for energy for going into summertime. And if, if summertime was a granimal, it would be like the rainbow striking one, because in summer we've got all those fabulous um, choices of, of foods, and you can just go out the field and eat them right off the vine, or you can pack them up and take them home, make one of my favorite dishes, the one that got me started with food, is jam. And gooseberries have a lot of natural pectin in them which is the thing that helps jam gel. And raspberries happen to be, have these um, nutrients that don't degrade when you freeze them. So you can make freezer jam. Um, and gazpacho is the, uh, one of the favorite uh, summer dishes. You put all, everything that's in season into a tomato base. And um, all those things together help ward off bad cholesterol so you can keep eating all the barbecue that you want all summer long. <laughs> And preserving um, the harvest in the summertime is a little like extending your culinary wardrobe, as it were. Um, and you can have options of eating other foods at different times of the season. It's a little like wearing shorts with wool socks and sandals, but you know, it's Oregon, we do that. <laughs> and in the fall, the, the cold snaps um, bring out the sweetness in root vegetables. And when you mix uh, sweet carrots with um, the licorice flavor in fennel and uh, the tart in a green apple. This is this is one of my recipes. You get this great dish. And in winter, we have this tendency to think that everything is really barren. But if you've done a little preserving, like with raisins, and you take advantage of the sturdy greens that are available and sweet beets with little cheese, you get this really colorful dish. And it's all seasonal in the winter time. And parsnips really overlooked vegetable, in my opinion. Very sweet, sweeter than a carrot, no bitterness. Chestnuts, that's something that we um, generally eat anymore, but the edible ones have sweetness and you put them in a, a cream bisque and you've got this really warm, cozy dish in the winter time. Um, and like your animals, cooking in the seasons should be um, very easy to do. And these are some of my favorite books for helping you get started, um, help you figure out what's in season one in your area, um, what foods to put together, how to make a really delicious dish. And as you know, um, eating locally is kind of a, a craze right now and every craze needs its community. 
And these are some of the places I go on the web to find recipes and exchange recipes. Um, and it's a place where you can go to to learn how to do this at home. Thank you.